Hello, welcome back. The topic today we are going to discuss is about intestinal TB or abdominal TB. People uh, uh, would have known about the lung TB or pulmonary TB. Uh, they know they will have a cough, they have a sputum, they have a fever, weight loss, they can spread to anyone. Even uh, uh, people would have uh, seen the uh, ad given by the government saying if any cough more than uh, two weeks could be TB. These are the people who know about the lung TB. But can TB affect intestine or the abdomen? Yes, it can affect. Most of the time, it could be a, a, a secondary to the lung TB. 80% of the people who are affected uh, lung TB patients can get intestinal TB or it could be the, uh, a primary TB in the abdomen. So what are the organs in the abdomen can be affected? Any organ can be affected. Uh, either it could be esophagus, your stomach, small intestine, large intestine, even liver, they can all can be affected. But the most common of all the abdomen TB, uh, two uh, or even you can say uh, two third of the uh, uh, TB is in the ileocecal junction. Ilium is the last part of the small intestine, cecum is the first part of the large intestine, which is situated in the right lower abdomen, uh, where the appendix area is there. Okay, uh, what is the uh, 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 cause of the TB, of course it could be, it's a primary TB straight away from the uh, 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 ingestion of the uh, uh, TB bacteria after years multiply and cause infection or it could be secondary to the lung TB. Okay, uh, what are the signs and symptoms? Uh, it's like any other abdomen uh, disease can cause simply abdomen uh, bloatedness or even uh, pain abdomen. Uh, ulcer like condition or even you know, diarrhea, weight loss, fever, especially evening rise of fever with the sweating uh, or some lump or you know mass in the abdomen. Uh, these are the signs and symptoms which can uh, along with it they may have a, a, a pulmonary uh, TB symptoms like cough, where fever and you know, all these things can come. And also they may sometimes have nutrition deficiency, anemia and uh, you know all these things. But this is a diagnostic challenge to the uh, clinicians. The reason being, the signs and symptoms are mostly non-specific. They look like mimic, as if uh, you know a simple gastritis or maybe you know ulcer, you know, uh, or even a simple diarrhea. These are things. But after treating for other diseases, or the uh, clinician has a suspicion. Okay, this could be uh, a, a tuberculous intestine, or sometimes. If the clinician uh, knows uh, the patient had a pulmonary TB or the uh, child was or a, uh, in the childhood the patient was exposed to the TB, then they may uh, 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 suspect a TB of the intestine. And okay, or most of the time, most of the time, it's a rare diagnostic challenge. And most of the time, they, uh, the patient goes for some other uh, uh, test like CT abdomen. And most of the time. The TB intestine or TB abdomen is diagnosed with the uh, CT scan of the abdomen. Uh, okay, S suppose the clinician suspects uh, TB, what he will do again after the examination? He will look for any uh, you know uh, lump or any uh, uh, mass pain. All these things he can look for that. Uh, uh, okay, what are the sequelae or what are or how the TB can affect the intestines or the abdomen? Like any other organ, like it can cause, uh, you know, it can destroy the intestine, uh, causing chronic inflammation, uh, leading to stricture, stricture of the intestine. So when the stricture comes, they can get constipation or abdominal distension, vomiting, or sometimes perforation can happen. This perforation can lead to abscess formation, or this uh, perforation, or because the intestines all. Uh, uh, adhering to each other, they can cause uh, adhesions plus fistula formations uh, uh, leading to gastric symptoms. Okay, the doctor will, uh, the clinician will ask for the bacteria test like any other TB, you will ask for the history examination plus like regular investigations like uh, Manto test, ESR, uh, even you know, CT, uh, X-ray chest, uh, CT chest or ultrasound chest. And uh, after that, the clinician or the, uh, the, the uh, doctor will look for the tissue diagnosis to say this is because of the uh, TB. 
to rule out other things like cancer, many many other things. So they may do an endoscopy, colonoscopy, or even a CT get a biopsy. All these things can be done. Once the tissue diagnosis comes as a TB intestine or abdominal TB, and the proper treatment starts. Uh, most of the time, once the tissue diagnosis has been taken, they will also look for any resistant form of TB. Also, they look for and give the proper treatment. Like uh, any other uh, TB, like a pulmonary or lungs TB, it can, contains initially the four drugs, then it can be three or two drugs afterwards. In the lungs, they will give usually six months treatment, but here the minimum is nine months to 12, uh, 12 months treatments. Uh, but it's all uh, given by the government guidance. The WHO or the, uh, the particular local government gives this is how the TB intestine or TB lungs has to be treated. So the uh, clinician will follow the guidance given by the government. But mostly it is the usually 9 to 12 months. And after that they will be on follow up and they look for any complications of the TB intestine or the abdomen. Uh, very rarely they may require surgical interventions. Like if suppose there is a stricture, even the presentation now that itself they have a lump or obstruction or stricture or fistula or abscess then uh, the, the patient may require a surgical intervention like probably the particular part of the intestine will be cut, removed and uh, joined back together and they have to follow the TB regimen by medical treatment. So TB uh, intestine or abdomen TB is a possibility and it's a diagnostic challenge to the clinician but once it's diagnosed, there is a definite treatment and it's easy to treat. Thank you.